you in your own time would read the entire book of Amos, a short book, but read chapter 5 and you will see where we are leading up to in chapter 6. So That's your study assignment for, for the week. Uh, let me go ahead and apologize now for my voices. My voice is a little scratchy here today. And I'll go ahead and apologize for that, but be a, probably be a good time for you to tune me out and tune him in. Amen. He, there is a word from from the Lord. <clears throat> Amos chapter six verse one says this: Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. And trust in the mountains of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations, to whom the house of Israel came. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. That's what I want to talk about for a few minutes. It's not new, but we're just revisiting at ease in Zion. I want to talk about a disengaged church. A disengaged church. We continue studying as we go through this year talking about the rebuilding of the walls. And all of us know that up to this point, what we have been doing is we have continually studied the missteps and the mistakes of past generations. We, we, we've spent our time, we've spent our time studying mistakes that generations before us made. 
And the reason why we do that, we study the mistakes of generations gone by so that we don't have to come behind them and make the same mistakes. If you're going to make a mistake, you ought to make a new mistake. You ought not, ought not be guilty of messing up the same thing that somebody else, you ought to learn sometime, at some point, you ought to learn from what somebody else went through. That's what we've been doing all year long. We've been pointing out the mistakes of the children of Israel. Proverbs, Proverbs 22 says, Proverbs 22 says that the wise foresee danger and they take precaution. Wise folk. If you're wise, you foresee danger and you take precaution. But foolish folk can see the same thing and keep right on doing what they're doing. And then they end up paying the price for it. The wise foresee danger. And that's what I'm trying to get us to do. I'm trying to help us learn from what these people went through we're mid-year now, and it won't be long before we're going to be heading toward the wall. We're going to go back and begin to actually build the wall. But now, we want to look at how a church can become disengaged from everything around it. Is there anybody here, is there anybody here who's old enough to remember when murder was big news. Anybody remember when you heard on the news that somebody was murdered? It was the talk of the town. Nobody could believe. You mean in our town somebody got murdered? That was big news. People whispered about it. They didn't really want to even talk about it. Somebody was murdered. It, it, just, it, was a, it was a big news, but now all at once. We live in a day when not only are people desensitized to murder. We live in a day when it seems that there is absolutely no regard for human life. And now it's just the opposite. The big news now is when nobody gets killed. As a matter of fact, I heard that on the television one night. There was nobody murdered in Atlanta tonight. That, and that was news. That, 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 that's news when nothing happens. We, we live in a society with so many social Ill, ills that people have become desensitized. There was a time, there was a time, some of you remember, there was a time when if a family fell on hard times, father and mother lost their job, if there was death and caused a different situation, somebody got sick and couldn't make out for their family. You remember when the whole community would mobilize and somehow all of them together would find a solution for the family in need. But we live in a day now when a whole family can sit under a bridge homeless months and months at a time. And as long as they don't come into our neighborhood and destroy the beautiful image of our neighborhood, nobody cares. I'm just talking about how we have become disengaged. I grew up in the 50s. I grew up in the 50s and... And, 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 and I, I can't ever remember a time when hatred and racism was so openly expressed as it is right now. I'm talking about somebody that came out of the 50s. Now, I, I knew it was there. It was there. But I've never seen a time like now when folk get on the television and, and boast about boast about their racism and never in history, in the history of this nation 
has there ever been so much expressed and open hatred for an elected leader? It has never, it has never happened. They, I know what they say. I know what they say. They say that it's because of his policies. But everybody up in this room know better than that. I say it's because of the color of his skin. I, 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 I just need to make a point. And the point that I want to make here is so that we'll all understand things are just out of whack now. The things are just all out of whack. Now, here comes the tragedy. Here's the tragedy. I've said all that to say this. Here comes the tragedy. Though we live in a time of calamity and great despair, the tragedy is that there are some folk among us who just don't care. Who could care less about the trouble that's going on around us? Those who watch it, who know what's going on. And the truth of the matter is some people are even profiting on it. That's why we can't get a handle on the National Rifle Association. Too many people are making money <laughs> selling these guns. It doesn't matter how many people die. People are profiting. Are y'all hearing this? presidential candidate just the other day said he was glad when the economy failed because it made him, gave him a chance to make a lot of money. Are you hearing me? It's the world that we are living in right now. There, now, now that might surprise you in itself and all of us know or all of us know that there have always been people in the world who only care about their own welfare who who, who, who could care less about the people in the world around them. But now here, here is where I might surprise you. Here's what might surprise you. The thing that might surprise you is that many of these folk who could care less go to church every Sunday. Many of these folk who care nothing about nobody show up in churches every Sunday morning singing the songs of Zion. They show up lifting their hands in praise with the name of Jesus on their lips. These people go to church, go to church, and they join in loudly singing, rescue the perishing, care for the dying, and then they go vote against health care. Yeah. They don't care for the perishing or the dying. They sing, I surrender all, and then completely isolate themselves from the pain that is right under their noses. These are the people, my brothers and sisters, I said all that to say this. These are the folk that God is talking to. These are the people that God sends his prophet Amos to talk to when he sent him to the church, to Zion, and said, you go down there and tell them, I said, woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Amos, you, you go down there and tell them I said, whoa, trouble, strife to them that are at ease in Zion. Let me give you a Hainesism here. Let me say it to my, my way. Woe to them that hide out in the church. Woe to them that hide out in the church to keep from dealing with real life issues. This is the message that was sent by God to his people, to the people in Zion, to the church. You got to understand where Zion is. Zion 
is that beautiful city of God. Zion, Zion, read the Bible, is the place where God dwells. Zion, Zion. When you see Zion, you ought to think church. That's, 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 the, that's the modern day likeness of Zion. Yeah, Zion is that place. It was the tallest mountain in a range of mountains up on Jeru in Jerusalem, and, and, and it was called Zion. It was the home of the temple of God. Zion was a safe place. Geographically, it was safe. It was the tallest mountain surrounded by a whole lot of other mountains. And, and, and so that meant that the enemy could not easily attack Zion. So if you wanted to be safe, didn't want to be bothered with enemies, make your way up to Zion. Make your way up to the church. Are y'all hearing me? But not only was it geographically safe? It was the dwelling place of God. The temple was there. It was designed as a place where the people would praise and worship God. And you do know that God inhabits the praises of his people. So that meant that God himself was there. God himself was the keeper of Zion. Y'all hear me? No wonder everybody, it's a safe place. God is watching over the place. No wonder everybody wants to go to Zion. No wonder everybody shows up every time the doors open up in Zion. Zion, my brothers and sisters, is the model for today's Christian church. For here is the place where we gather. It's a gathering place for the people of God to come and worship. Here is a place for the people to gather, worship, and equip themselves so that they can go out and further the work of the kingdom. It all happens right here in the church, right here in Zion. So since Zion was such a safe place, Zion was such a hallowed place, in that day, there were always crowds that would show up to hang around Zion. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. They kept showing up, and, and, and it became evident that, that their purpose for showing up got lost somewhere. They were coming, crowds always gathered there, but somehow they, 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 they missed out on why they were going to Zion. They, they forgot about their purpose of coming together. They did their worship because they forgot what they were coming there for. Some of them thought they were coming to a fashion show. Some thought they were coming to find a husband or a wife. They just forgot why they were coming. Y'all hear me? They, they, they were coming. They kept coming. They just forgot what they were coming for. It was a good social hour. And because they forgot that worship became stale. Worship became ritualistic. They just sort of forgot why we came together. They continued to show up. But they showed up only because it was a safe place. They showed up only because they could rub shoulders with folk who were just like them. So they keep on showing up in Zion. The enemy couldn't get to them. God was watching over the place. What better place to be to hang out and socialize than in the church, than in Zion? But God who sits high and looks down low, he saw the attitude shift. He saw that they were losing it. He saw that they were moving away from the purpose in which he established his church. God saw this. He saw them turning his house into a social club. And let me throw this in. Let me throw this in. If, if we remove the gospel message and walk away from our mandate to make disciples, all we got up in here is a big social club. 
Y'all ain't hearing me. I say, if we walk away from the gospel and our mandate to go out and make other disciples, yeah, we might be having a good time up in here. All it is is a big social club. But look at God's move. Look at God's next move. God says, I, I got to do something. <laughs> He'd send somebody down there. And, and the thing is, he, he didn't look around in the church to see, I, to see if I can get one of those preachers in there <laughs> to do it because they all messed up in it. They, they can't. He, didn't, he didn't even try to get one of the prophets that were already there. He went out into the country. Went out to a place. Read your Bible. Went out to a place called Tekoa up in the hillsides outside of Jerusalem and, and he didn't find a professional prophet. Old fell out there plowing. <laughs> Keeper of sycamore trees. Uh, yeah, he, he is a farmer out there. He, he goes out there and taps a farmer named Amos on the shoulder. Say, look at here. I, I need you to go in town. No, you ain't ever been there before. You don't know much about what goes. I need you to go in town and talk to my folk. I need you to leave what you're doing. I need you to leave the countryside and go into town and carry a message to the people in the church. Need you to go. And I, I, I got something I need you to go. I need you to just go from where you are, walk down and, and see. You got to understand, Amos was not a professional prophet. Amos wasn't on the king's payroll. Are y'all hearing me? Sometimes the message changes when you're on the king's payroll. He wasn't on the king's payroll. He, he was just a country boy out there watching his flock. God says, you go into town and tell my folk. God went, got him. Amos took a 12-mile trip into town to carry a message. To the people of God. He's carrying a message to people who have forgotten about God, who have walked away from the cause of God. He is, he's, he's carrying a message to folk who have gone into town and now that yeah, all they do is sit around church taking it easy. He says, uh, Amos, here's what I want you to tell him. He gave him some, he, he, yeah, and this way you got to read chapter five. This is what. He said, Amos, I want you to tell this to my church. Tell this to the folk who are hanging around Zion. He says, first of all, I want, you to, I want you to tell them, chapter 5, verse 12, that I know there are manifold transgressions. Are y'all hearing me? I, I know there are mighty sin. They, they got some other folk food, food, but I'm God. And I know who they really are. He says, I want you to tell them I know about your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. He says, I, I know, I want you to let him know, I, I know that you hang around Zion. I know you got the hang, you, 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 you got your name on the church roll. But while I'm looking at your name on the roll, I see you taking bribes. But while you got your name on the book, while you're hanging around there in the church, I see how you treat the poor. It's right there in the book. It's right there in the book. Look at chapter 5, verse 19. He says, you sit around with your religious selves, saying that you're waiting on the day of the Lord, waiting on the day that the Lord will come down. But what I want you to know, that, that, that when the Lord does come, it ain't going to be what you think for you. <laughs> That, that's, it's right there in the book. He says, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you say you're waiting on the day of the Lord when the Lord is going to come and avenge his followers. He says, but for you, though, for you though that's going to be a dark day. Now, he's talking to folk in the church. He ain't talking to folk on the street. He's talking to folk in church. He says, for you, that will be a day of darkness and not a day of light. Look at chapter 5, verse 21. He says, you show up for all the feast days. Men's Day, Women's Day, <laughs> Children's Day. You, you show up all the days, all, all the feast days. And, 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 and God says, I, 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 yeah, because of who you really are, because of where your hearts are with me, I despise your feast. I despise your feast. I got it written down here. Ain't nobody going to shout today. Ain't, 
Ain't going to be no shouting up in here today. I despise your feast days. I despise all those special moments you have. I, I, I will not, and this, you listen, listen, if you, you offer it up your incense, I won't even smell it. <laughs> That's what God said. You burn your incense. You, you are worshiping burning your incense. I won't even smell it. I will not accept your burnt offering. Neither will I regard your peace offering. It gets worse. It gets worse. Look at verse 23, chapter 5. He says, I don't even want to hear your songs. <laughs> Stop singing. I don't even want <laughs> This is rough. This is rough. I don't even want to hear your songs. As far as I'm concerned, right there out of the book, they are just noise. <laughs> I, I know... This is God talking. I know you're in Zion. I, I know you got your name on the church roll. But you cannot escape judgment. Chapter 5, verse 24, he says, let judgment run down like water. And righteousness as a mighty stream. Y'all hear how tough this is? This is some tough talk here. And, and the most disturbing part of it is that he's talking to the church. He ain't talking to the drug dealers out on the street. He, he ain't talking to, you see what I'm saying? He ain't talking to, to the folk standing out on the corner. He's talking to the church. But then we get to verse 6. He sums it all up, chapter 6. He says, here's the message, woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Woe to them that are in the church taking it easy. Let me remind you now that this ain't a message to folk who don't go to church. That's another message for them. This ain't a message for folk who are not in church, this, the out of the church, this is, folk, this is a message for folk who are in church. And the message now, get it, it's not because they're in church, but it's because they're in church doing nothing. Y'all ain't hearing this. Not because you're in the church, but because you're in the church taking it easy. Oh yes, my brothers and sisters, don't, don't fool yourselves. If you're not saved, don't walk out of here with your, your chest stuck out. That is a price to pay for not being in the church. That there's a price to pay for not being a part of the body of Christ. But what I'm trying to get over to you is that there's also a price to pay for being in the church and doing nothing. <laughs> Y'all looking mighty strange out there, huh? Y'all smile anyway. Smile anyway. I'll be through in a minute. I'll be through in a minute. Oh, yeah, my, my brothers and my sisters there. Yeah, yeah the, the word today compels me to tell all in the sound of my voice, woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Now, if you're busy about the Father's business, if you're doing your job, I ain't talking to you. <laughs> but if you were just in the church showing up Sunday after Sunday and doing nothing for the kingdom cause this message is for you woe to them that are at ease in Zion those who are in church but ain't about church woe to them that are at ease and those who treat the church like it's a train station where you sit around and wait on the glory train. <laughs> you, do, you do know that, that there are some folk who this is just a place where they're waiting on the train to go to glory. Are y'all hearing me? Woe to them that are at ease and I woe to them that treat the church like it's a free country club where we gather 
and slap each other on the back and celebrate our great salvation. Woe to them that are at ease, especially in times like these. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Woe to them that can sit in church, enjoy themselves, just enjoy being there while people are being murdered in the street. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion when there are people in your own community who don't have food to eat. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Those who are content to show up, park in a paved parking lot, sit on padded pews in an air-conditioned building, and refuse to bring tithe and offering that makes all of that possible. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Woe to them that are just glad to be in the number. Just glad to be in the house who care nothing about helping with the mission of the church. Woe to them. Woe to them who come Sunday after Sunday who don't care anything about converting, transforming, or maturing. Woe to them that are at ease. In I'll be through in a minute, y'all. I see. Weighing on you. I can tell you. Can tell you. Woe to them that don't want to serve anybody. Woe to them that don't want to help anybody. Woe to them that don't want to get involved in anything. Just glad to be in the house. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Woe to those who are content to come and hear the good news of the gospel and never share that good news with anybody else. Woe to them that are at ease. And that's the big one right there. Woe to them that have heard the saving message of Jesus Christ. Somebody told you, and now you're sitting there on, sitting there. <laughs> Now you have gotten the message with your saved self sitting there and won't share that same saving message. Are y'all hearing me? It saved you and you won't share it with them. Woe to them that can hear the good news and not share. Are y'all hearing me? Woe to them that can sit on it and never tell any. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah, woe to them that won't share the gospel message. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, I'll go on and close. I'll stop, I'll stop. But woe to them that has heard uh, the message of Jesus Christ. Somebody told you about a Savior who died on the cross to save you from sin. Woe to them who can sit down and not share that with somebody else. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Woe to them that can't tell somebody, yes, I was on my way to hell. No God on my side, no heaven in my view, but Jesus turned it all around. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Woe to them that can't tell somebody, baby, you ain't by yourself. I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe, save am I. Woe to them that can't tell somebody that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. They wouldn't tell somebody that he died. Are y'all hearing me? Here's the good news right here. He died, but he ain't dead. Y'all ain't hearing me. That's good news right there. He died, but he ain't dead. Because on the third day morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Woe to them. Woe to them that won't share 
won't share the gospel message with a dying world. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Woe to them that although you know the cost of your salvation, although you understand and you know yourself what he did to save you, woe to them that won't tell somebody else. Woe to them that's not about his business. If you're here this morning, let me give you the opportunity now to become a part of the family of God. It all starts. You want to be a service to God? You want to be a part of his kingdom? It all starts with just coming forth and saying, yes, I believe that. That's how you're saved. That's what saves you is I believe that. I believe he died for me. I believe he died to set me. I believe that. I believe that he died, but I believe he got it. That's where it starts. You can make that decision and come here now. You can start a life of serving him. A life, a life of serving him. You can turn it all around just by your, your belief right now. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I shall be saved.